the immense contribution Tesla made to our present technocracy has not yet been fully developed and many of Tesla's invention still remain for the future. Tesla gave us our first practical electric AC motor and with it, alternating current. Tesla made it possible to send electric current over very thin wire from remote powerhouses into the great cities which now turn the wheels of our vast industrial empire. Tesla gave us the first fluorescent lamp, the first wireless radar and many other inventions which we see about us for Tesla was one of the more advanced personalities who came to this earth at the right time to start the great cycle of universal expansion which would lead certain classifications of the Earthman into the higher dimensions of more advanced life. Welcome everybody to Sunday Night Class. And tonight's class is going to be called From Tesla to John Searle, Inventing Our Positive Future. For many of you, you're going to see some things you've never seen before. Uh, it's going to be very fascinating. It's going to be, um, there's a lot of things that are going to be said that maybe aren't going to make sense. And please just go ahead and raise your hand and ask questions. Uh, this is a class that is going to combine the two different ways of looking at what's happening for our planet moving forward. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Kennedy. This is David Reynolds. We're going to co-facilitate the first part of the lecture, which is about Nikola Tesla, what his vision of the future of our world is, more importantly, who he was spiritually. Inaris is, as you've seen, a science of life. It's a spiritual school, if you want to call it that. It's where we learn that each and every one of us are energy beings. And everything we do, say, think, act upon, uh, affects our life. We're constantly filling out the hard drive of our own consciousness with information. And that information then reflects itself back into our life. Not only from this life, but many, many past lives. This is the perspective that Unarius is going to bring to tonight's lecture. We also have Fernando and Jason from John Searle Organization. Searle Magnetics. Searle Magnetics, thank you very much. And they're going to show you some fun stuff. This is really great. Um, a little bit of background. David and I give this talk about Nikola Tesla and who he was uh, at a lot of different expos. And uh, in doing this at the last LA Conscious Life Expo, uh, we were walking around and, and came upon their booth. And I took one look at what they were doing and went, oh my goodness, this is exactly what we've been talking about for, what, 10, 12 years at least? And waiting for somebody to come along and actually put this into action. Because one of the things that we hear in our part of the lecture is, well, where's your working model? I said, well, we're, we're, we're a school. We're not an engineering firm. Yeah. And we don't have all that equipment to do that. But we want to educate people and help with this, this awareness of, of what electricity energy can do and what it, how it is not being used properly today and where we're going on our planet. Because as everybody knows, we've heard plenty of stuff about how awful it is and how you know the world's going to come to an end and you know everybody's going to be running around in loincloths because this is happening, that's happening. We talk about a very positive future for our world. That there are a lot of people that were planted on this planet from the higher worlds and it's been their mission to help bring about a positive change for our planet. And their voices have been shot down. Their voices have been shut, uh, kept shut up. And so this is part of what we're doing, is this awareness of letting people know, not only that there's a positive future, but how it's going to come about and how they can be a part of that positive future. So with that, David, did I leave anything out? Uh, planet Earth is going into a new age. And You've heard about it, maybe the age of Aquarius, but it's definitely something that is factual and is happening. Um, we're at the very beginning of that new age. This, uh, we call it the uh, new age science, or the uh, new age of spiritual renaissance. In other words, we need a renaissance in spirit. Because if we had this great technology that Nikola Tesla predicted, and some of the other technology that's coming along, are we going to have the spiritual understanding to properly use it? So, we, this is a, one of the most important things that Unarius has to teach is how you function as an energy being in a great cosmos 
of infinite energy. That's our spiritual nature. So we're taking it out of the realm of religion, we're putting it into the realm of something called interdimensional physics, or science. So spirit and science go together. We're going to need a lots of electrical power to, future, to power our future uh, new age, correct? Where are we going to get that electrical power from? Well, we're going to talk about that. Kevin and I will talk about that in our presentation. So we're going, planet Earth is going to need plenty of electrical power in the new age to bring about Earth's positive future. It will be positive. And this is what our talk is about. Nikola Tesla was the um, scientist who, engineer scientist, who uh, developed alternating current in the way that we use it that powers our civilization. You could pretty easily say that if it weren't for Nikola Tesla and how he developed alternating current, we would not have our civilization as it is today. And it's not just alternating current that he developed. Tesla developed uh, radio, first wireless. He developed X-ray. Well, he didn't develop it. He discovered X-ray. He uh, developed the uh, hydraulic brake. He, uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on radio. and on. Radio, radio. radar. Um, it just goes on and on and on of all these things that he found in his experiments and brought to our world, and then but didn't have time to develop all of these different things. Plus, he predicted, Kevin, the future technology. Absolutely, he, he did. He predicted a power tower, which we're going to get into too. Now, uh, you may ask, well, what the heck is Janarius talking about Nikola Tesla for? Was he one of the founders? Well, no, he was not. But since its inception in 1954 by Ernest Dell and Ruth E. Norman, Unarius has been heralding Nikola Tesla and his vision for planet Earth and who he was spiritually. This is such an important aspect to this whole equation because you say, well, you know, why was he able to do what he was able to do? And I went through physics classes and I studied engineering and I know a little bit about electricity. Why can't I do it? Why can't you do it? Or you could look at it this way. Why, why is Mozart? Why was Mozart writing symphonies at five? I play an instrument. Heck, I'm 55. I can't write a symphony. Why? I got chipped. Well, no, I didn't get chipped. This is the process of evolution that Unarius teaches, that each and every one of us are spiritual beings. And these souls that are able to do this have developed that through many, many lifetimes. And in that process of feeding into their consciousness, into their energy body, these positive, constructive experiences, it's just like going from grade one to grade two to grade three. Sooner or later, you end up in college, and somebody who's in first grade or kindergarten looks at what you're doing and says, wow, that's amazing. That's magic. Because they don't understand all the effort and time and many, many lifetimes that person went through to get to that point. The same thing with Tesla. You know, Everybody looked around at what he was doing, and they thought he was a magician. You know, how is he able to do that? What's he doing? How, how come he's doing this? They, they didn't get it. I mean, think about it. This was the horse and buggy time. We had just come into the process of beginning that wonderful thing of polluting our planet when uh, Tesla was developing alternating current, and nobody understood what he was doing and who he was. Well, this is part of the equation that Ianarius talks about so much, is that what he did, you can do. I can do. Now, it may take us lifetimes to develop that, but the wonderful thing is, is that it isn't that God looked down and said, I'm going to bless this guy and the rest of you are out of luck. It's that every one of us has this wonderful opportunity to develop our consciousness in a positive way if we take the initiative to begin that process in our everyday life. So we call Nikola Tesla a cosmic visionary because through his consciousness, he was able to download an incredible amount of patents some of which have already been invented or developed, some of which are for the future generations and technicians and scientists to learn how to take advantage of all the physics that he planted the seeds for. So, like I said earlier, the whole universe is broadcasting energy in multiple dimensions. Jesus called this the Father. It's the infinite transmitter. And because Jesus was one of those cosmic visionaries himself, over many lifetimes, like Nikola Tesla, he learned to develop his own receivership. So he was able to receive these incredible um, 
inventions for the future. I'm talking about Tesla. Jesus was in, been able to download an incredible amount of healing power and redistribute it and uh, heal a lot of people. A lots of wisdom came through Jesus of Nazareth. Both of these are cosmic visionaries. But like Kevin said, they had spent thousands and thousands of lifetimes on other planets, including the spiritual planets, developing this ability. So when they incarnated here, he was able to download what planet Earth needed at the time. So Tesla was describing a physics based on what? Principles of energy and frequency. So he developed something that's practically not that developed or uh, it has a lot of usages in the future, and that's the Tesla coil. We're going to demonstrate it for those who've never seen a Tesla coil, you'll be in for a surprise. So what Tesla did is take a little bit of frequency and step it up to a higher potential, a higher frequency. The voltage came up with it. So when that happens, you can do an incredible amount of things with it. So, has anybody heard of uh, longitudinal electricity? Okay. So that's a new kind of electricity he discovered, and he never, it never really got developed. But if you think of a tsunami, the power wave that travels underneath the uh, ocean is very powerful and it's very fast. It's not a traverse waveform. It's a longitudinal waveform that is the push and pull. So he developed an energy system that was going to utilize longitudinal electricity. Some people call it scalar electricity now. And other countries have, have already developed it to some small extent. So he discovered, hey look, using these principles of energy, we can transmit energy to other parts of the world. And all you needed to do is develop a receiver, the opposite of the schematic here. And you will be, you'll be able to receive an unlimited amount of energy. Now, he designed a prototype. It was in Long Island, New York, right? The Warden Cliff Tower. And because it was so futuristic, mankind at that time did not share his vision. And eventually it was torn down and the funding was eventually removed or ended. But that doesn't mean that's the end of that project. So if you study the Unarius chapters, Unarius, especially Ernest Horman, you will find that this is part of our new age. We had that technology in Atlantis, and guess what happened? It fell into the wrong hands, it got misused, and there, there went Atlantis in a 24-hour period. So when we have this technology of Atlantis coming back into our future physics, we have to have people who are spiritually motivated and have worked out through past life therapy, if you want to call it that, their negative uh, warlike tendency. So they will not misuse that. Does that make sense? So the future scientists, the future, future technicians will know about their past lives, especially when they worked in a negative fashion and that will help you attune to your higher self so that's what we have we have our higher self that we work with and when you make that attunement to the infinite to the brothers the spiritual brotherhood we will evolve this technology we're talking about so this this tower is then operating as the sun would essentially so it is an energy converter the sun very simply is a large vortexual energy system in which it is a uh, uh, an inpouring of this high energy source from this other dimension, this fourth dimension, which Einstein uh, related to us, and it converts fourth dimensional energy into dimensional energies which we are familiar with, such as microwaves, heat, light, uh, all sorts of radiations. This tower works in a very similar principle. Okay, step one. Where does it start? Well, essentially it starts with what you see here, these multicolored cells. These are uh, a model depicting ultra-pure silicon cells. Now these can be manufactured with existing technologies which we picked up from our uh, space exploration, which uh, the research we've done out in space and space lab, mm -hmm. and manufacturing techniques which will be coming through. Uh, they will have to be grown in uh, special chambers uh, without the effects of gravity. 
so that the cells can be made ultra.